Hey guys, today I'm going to show you how I've got my Cena SMH10 comm system mounted to my wife's HJC IS33 helmet. Now this setup obviously works on a three-quarter helmet. It also works on any kind of open face helmet. So something like this is how you can use your comm system or record to YouTube with any kind of helmet less than a full face. Obviously with a full face like the one I use, the mic is extremely easy to set up. You just stick it in there. You don't have to worry about wind noise or anything like that. But with an open helmet, you do have to take some precautions. Now, as far as mounting the SMH10 unit, I really do like the way that this mounts over the 20S. I think it's just a little bit more secure. You just have a little tab up here and it goes into the slot. Pretty simple there. Now, the clamp system here, it was very easy to put on. This helmet has a lot of room in it. I just loosened this cheek pad, slid it in there. You've got two bolts to tighten it down and that's all there is to it. The wiring I have running up, obviously it splits. One goes to the microphone, one goes to the left speaker and one goes to the right speaker. This, ha this helmet has plenty of room. Let me show you the speakers in here. If you just fold the cheek pads down, you can see the speakers tucked in there. Tons of room in there. You could fit virtually any speaker you wanted in here. Lots of room. And then this nice soft pad just lays over it. Doesn't contact your ears or anything like that. That's all there was to the install for the speakers. You just tuck the wires up in here and, and hide them out of the way. Bada bing, bada boom. Now the microphone, this is obviously going to vary depending on the exact helmet you have, which mic you have. This is the one thing I don't like about the SMH10. Unlike the 20S, which will come with every microphone option for the unit, you have several different SMH10 SKUs. So if you want one, for example, with a wired mic, that's one SKU. Uh, this particular one came with this flexible boom mic and uh, some, I, I can't remember the other one. I obviously don't use it. But that comes in a different SKU. There's no one SKU that has every option. So you have to figure out which microphone you're going to use and order the right SKU. Now, if you accidentally order the wrong one, they do sell these separately. But obviously, you're just wasting money there. Now, I'll show you what it comes like standard. Slip this off. I'll talk about that more in a little bit here. <clears throat> this is, like I said, the flexible boom mic. It is obviously a flexible boom. And it is... Uh, just a little velcro pad here on the other side now if I separate this cheek pad a little bit it's just on a snap here you can see that you just have this uh, velcro pad there we go and now you can see it on the other end of the boom so all you have to do is find a spot where this will stick and it'll stick to any of the fabric in your helmet it's you know it's not super industrial velcro it's not going to hurt the helmet but it will stay in place so you just snake this down where you need it i'm going to put it back in there and snap your pad back in place ah! as soon as you get it positioned right ah! come on snap the tough snap. It wants to stay. Come on. Okay, well, I'm just an idiot. There we go. And obviously the mic stays where you put it. Now, if you have the regular mic just out in the open like this, it is useless. Nope, I didn't snap that right back. Anyway, I'll fix that after the video. But, point is, this is just a little foam cover on the microphone. <clears throat> now, Anyone that knows anything about riding in the wind knows that that doesn't work, all right? Why they don't include some dead cat material with their mics is beyond me. <clears throat> but it does depend on your exact situation what you need. Now, if you're riding, for example, a big Harley and you've got a barn door windscreen and you just have no wind hitting your helmet, this is actually going to be just fine. If you're in a, you know, a little half helmet and you have no front visor, this is just sitting out in front of you. That's fine, as long as there's no wind. But if you have wind coming over, you've got to stop it because you're gonna get a lot of wind noise. This is gonna annoy me. Oh, that's why they both came undone. Yeah, I'll just hold it. <laughs> so, the one important thing with this mic is there is a front and back side. There is a flatness to it. Okay, I'm holding it flat, and there it's wide. 
So it has two flat sides and you notice this little bump here that faces away from you. Right there, it's like a little fin. Make sure that's away from you. That means the mic openings are facing towards you. You want this as close as possible to your mouth. That way it gets you the most audio and the least amount of noise. Now the problem with wind is the wind movement over the mic. You know, you've got the wind blowing over the foam, just running past it, and you get the actual wind noise. This is called a dead cat. This material is called dead cat material. This is what you need to cut wind noise. No, it's not just regular fur. Unfortunately, you can't just go to the fabric store like Joann's, Michael's, Hobby Lobby and grab some of this material. I know, I tried. All the fur material they have there, it's too thick, it's too heavy. The actual fur isn't long enough. The backing is too thick. It's going to end up blocking more of the audio than the wind. You can order this very inexpensively online. Google for it. Go to Amazon. I happen to have uh, a dead cat cover for one of my professional microphones. Uh, so I just cut a little snick it out here and, and made my own and then just sewed it shut. All you do is wrap it around your mic and you know sew it to size. It takes a few minutes. Well, what I did is I trimmed some of the fur on the flat side that faces the wife. That way it's not tickling her so she can put it closer to her mouth. It's not flying up in her face. You just slide it over the mic. And that's all it takes to dramatically cut the wind noise. You want this nice and long everywhere else. And yes, it's gonna shed for a while. It does stop after you use it for a little bit and get all the loose pieces off, especially after you've cut it. But that's all it takes. So now this goes within a couple inches of the wife's mouth, usually just under the visor here. Just like that. And she has great audio. I can hear just fine. It records over my headset to the GoPro just fine. That's all it takes. She's obviously riding behind me when she's using this. And sometimes, you know, we get that weird buffeting because the wind will come from around my helmet. So you do get occasional little puffs of wind noise and stuff like that. But for the most part, it's great. If you're a rider, if you're up front, like I said, especially if you're behind a windscreen, it's gonna be even better. As long as the wind is a constant level, that's gonna be even better. So this is all it takes. Um, another thing, some units will have the ability to plug in external mics, uh, external earbuds, that kind of thing. I don't find that they work nearly as well. Uh, I would definitely, if you're using these Cena units, only use the Cena mics. But the key is the dead cat material. That's really it. So there you go, guys. I hope that helps somebody. If you're looking to wire up your three-quarter or open helmet, that's the ticket. That's all you need. Dead cat, the right mic setup, you're in business. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to subscribe. Give me a thumbs up. And we'll see you next time.